Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be starting a new series in my channel called Countries of the World. Basically, what I'm going to be doing in this series is analyzing countries of the world and basically doing reports and sharing them with you guys. So, as you can already see from the flag, you can probably guess uh, our first report is going to be on the United States of America. So without further ado, let's begin. The United States of America, or the USA, commonly known as the United States, or America, is a country primarily located in North America, consisting of 50 states, a federal district, five major self-governing territories, and various possessions. At 3.8 million square miles, or 9.8 square million kilometers, it's, it is the world's third or fourth largest country by total area. So they don't know if it's either third or fourth. With a population of more than 328 million people, it is the third most populous country in the world. The national capital is Washington, D.C. The most populous city is New York City. Paleo Indians migrated from Siberia to the North American mainland at least 12,000 years ago, and European colonization began in the 16th century. The United States emerged from the 13 British colonies established along the East Coast. Disputes over taxation and political representation with Great Britain led to the American Revolutionary War, which established independence. In the late 18th century, the U.S. began rigorously expanding across North America and gradually acquiring new territories, oftentimes displacing Native Americans and admitting new states. By 1948, the United States banned the continent. Slavery was legal in the southern United States until the second half of the 19th century when the American Civil War led to its abolition. The Spanish-American War and World War I established to the, the U.S. as a world power, a status confirmed by the outcome of World War II. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union engaged in various proxy wars but avoided direct military conflict. They also competed in the space race, culminating in the 1969 space flight that first landed humans on the moon. The Soviet Union's collapse in 1991 ended the Cold War, leaving the United States as the world's sole superpower. The United States is a federal republic and a representative democracy with three separate branches of government, including a bicameral legislature. It, it is a founding member of the United Nations World Bank International Monetary Fund Organization of American States NATO, and other international organizations. It is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. The U.S. ranks high in international measures of economic freedom, reduced level of perceived corruption, quality of life, and quality of higher education. It is one of the most racially and ethnically diverse nations in the world. Considered a melting pot of cultures and ethnicities, its population has been profoundly shaped by centuries of migration. Despite income and wealth disparities, the United States is a highly developed country and continuously ranks high in measures of socioeconomic performance. It accounts for approximately a quarter of global GDP in the world's largest economy by nominal GDP. By value, the United States is the world's largest importer and the second largest exporter of goods. Although its population is only 4.2% of the world total, it holds 29.4% of the total wealth in the world, the largest share held by any country. Making up more than a third of global military spending, it is the foremost military power in the world and is 
a leading political, cultural, and scientific force internationally. The first known use of the name America dates back to 1507, when it appeared on a world map created by the German cartographer Martin Waldseemuller. On his map, the name is shown in large letters on what would now be considered South America, in honor of Amerigo Vespucci. The Italian explorer was the first to postulate that the West Indies did not represent Asia's eastern limit, but were part of a previously unknown landmass. In 1538, the Flemish cartographer Gerardus Mercator used the name America on his own world map, applying it to the entire Western Hemisphere. The first documentary evidence of the phrase United States of America dates from a January 2nd, 1776 letter written by Stephen Moylan. Esquire to George Washington's aide de camp, Joseph Reed. Moylan expressed his wish to go with full and ample powers from the United States of America to Spain to seek assistance in the Revolutionary War effort. The first known publication of the phrase United States of America was in an anonymous essay in the Virginia Gazette newspaper in Williamsburg, Virginia on April 6, 1776. The second draft of the Articles of Confederation, prepared by John Dickinson and completed no later than June 17, 1776, declared the name of this confederation shall be the United States of America. The final version of the Articles, sent to the states for a ratification in late 1777, sorry, stated that the style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. In June 1776, Thomas Jefferson wrote the phrase United States of America in all capitalized letters in the headline of his original rough draw of the Declaration of Independence. This draft of the document did not surface until June 21, 1776, and it is unclear whether it was returned before or after. Dickinson used the term in his June 17 draft of the Articles of Confederation. The short form United States is also standard. Other common forms are the U.S., the USA, and America. The term America was seldom used in the United States before the 1890s and rarely used by presidents before Theodore Roosevelt. It does not appear in patriotic songs composed during the 18th and 19th centuries including the Star-Spangled Banner, My Country, Tis of Thee, and the Battle Heim of the Republic. Although it is common in 20th century songs like God Bless America, colloquial names are the U.S. of A and internationally the states. Colombia, a popular name in American poetry, and songs of the late 18th century derives its origin from Christopher Columbus. It appears in the name District of Columbia. Many landmarks and institutions in the Western Hemisphere bear his name, including the country of Columbia. The phrase United States was originally pro plural in American usage. It described a collection of states Example, the United States or. The singular form became popular after the end of the Civil War and is now standard usage in the U.S. A citizen of the United States is an American. United States, American, and U.S. refer to the country adjectively. In English, the word American rarely refers to topics or subjects not directly connected with the United States. It has been generally accepted that the first inhabitants of North America migrated from Serb Siberia by way of the Bering Land Bridge and arrived at least 12,000 years ago. However, some evidence suggests an even earlier date of arrival. The Clovis culture, which appeared around 11,000 BC, is believed to represent the first wave of human settlement of the Americans.
This was likely the first three major waves of migration into North America. Later waves brought the ancestors of present day uh, at the Baskins, Aleuts, and Eskimos. Over time, indigenous cultures in North America grew increasingly complex, and some, such as the pre Columbian Mississippian culture in the southeast, developed and advanced agriculture, arti- architecture, and complex societies. The city state of Cahokia is the largest, most complex pre Columbian archaeological site in the modern day. Excuse me, in the modern day United States. In the Four Corners region, ancestral Puebloan culture developed from the centuries of agricultural experimentation. The Haudenosaunee, located in the southern Great Lakes region, was established at some point between the 12th and 15th centuries. Most prominent along the Atlantic coast were the Algonquin tribes, who practiced hunting and trapping, along with the limited cultivation. Uh, excuse me, guys. I'm just going to take a water break. So, just excuse me. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Estimating the native population of North America at the time of European contact is difficult. Douglas H. Ubelaker of the Smithsonian Institution estimated that there was a population of 92,916 in the South Atlantic states and a population of 473,616 in the Gulf states. But most academics regard this figure as too low. Anthropologist Henry F. Dobbins believed the populations were much higher, suggesting around 1.1 million along the shores of the Gulf of Mexico, 2.2 million people living between Florida and Massachusetts, 5.2 million in the Mississippi Valley and tributaries, and around 700,000 people in the Florida Peninsula. The first Europeans to arrive in the continental United States were Spanish conquistadors such as Juan Ponce de Leon, who made his first expedition to Florida in 1513. Even earlier, Christopher Columbus had landed in Puerto Rico on his 1493 voyage, and San Juan was settled by the Spanish a decade later. The Spanish set up the first settlements in Florida and New Mexico, such as St. Augustine, often considered the nation's oldest city, and Santa Fe. The French established their own settlements along the Mississippi River, notably New Orleans. Successful English settlements of the eastern coast of North America began with the Virginia colony in 1607 at Jamestown and with the Pilgrims colony at Plymouth in 1620. Many settlers were dissenting Christians who came seeking religious freedom. The continent's first elected legislative assembly, Virginia's House of Burgesses, was founded in 1619. Documents such as the Mayflower Compact and the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut established precedents for representative self-government and constellation that would develop throughout the American colonies. In the early days of colonization, many Amer- European settlers were subject to food shortages, disease, and attack from Native Americans. Native Americans were also often at war with neighboring tribes and European settlers. In many cases, however, the natives and settlers came to depend on one another. So, settlers traded for food and animal pelts, natives for guns, tools, and other European goods. Natives taught many settlers to cultivate corn, beans, and other foodstuffs. European missionaries and others felt it was important to civilize the Native Americans and urge them to adopt European agricultural practices and lifestyles. However, with the increased European colonization of North America, the Native Americans were often displaced and killed. 
The native population of America declined after European arrival for various reasons, primarily diseases such as smallpox and measles. The Thirteen Colonies. The original Thirteen Colonies in 1775. So that the Thirteen Colonies were New Jersey, Massachusetts, um, New York. Pennsylvania, Maryland, Rhode Island, Delaware, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. So yeah, let's keep going. European settlers also began trafficking of Amer African slaves into colonial America via the transatlantic slave trade. Because of a lower prevalence of tropical diseases and better treatment, slaves had a much higher life expectancy in North America than in South America, leading to a rapid increase in their numbers. Colonial society was largely divided over the religious and moral implications of their numbers. Of slavery, sorry. And several colonies passed acts both against and in favor of the practice. However, by the turn of the 18th century, African slaves had supplanted European indigenous servants as cash crop labor, especially in the American South. The 13 colonies that would become the United States of America were administered by the British as overseas dependencies. All nonetheless had local governments with elections open to most free men. With extremely high birth rates, low death rates, and steady settlement, the colonial population grew rapidly, eclipsing Native American population. The Christian revivalist movement of the 1730s and 1740s, known as the Great Awakening, fueled interest both in religion and in religious liberty. During the Seven Years' War, 1756 to 1763, known in the U.S. as the French and Indian War, British forces captured Canada from the French with the creation of the Providence of Quebec, Canada's Francophone population would remain isolated from the English speaking colonial dependencies of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and the three colonies. Excluding the Native Americans who lived there, the 13 colonies had a population of over 2.1 million in 1770, about a third that of Britain. Despite continuing new arrivals, the rate of natural increase was such that by the 1770s, only a small minority of Americans had been born overseas. The colony's distance from Britain had allowed the development of self-government, but their unprecedented success motivated British monarchs to periodically seek to reassert royal authority. The American Revolutionary War, fought by the 13 colonies against the British Empire, was the first successful war of independence by a non-European entity against a European power. Americans had developed an ideology of republicanism, asserting that government rested on the will of the people as expressed in their local legislators. They demanded their rights as Englishmen and no taxation without representation. The British insisted on administering the empire through parliament, and the conflict escalated into war. The Second Continental Congress unanimously adopted the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1776. This day is celebrated annually as Independence Day. In 1777, the Articles of Confederation established a decentralized government that operated until 1789. After its defeat at the Siege of Yorktown in 1781, Britain signed the Peace Treaty. American sovereignty became internationally recognized, and the country was granted all lands east of the Mississippi River. Tensions with Britain remained, however, leading to the War of 1812, which was fought to a draw. Nationalists led the Philadelphia Conve Convention of 1787 in writing the United States Constitution, ratified in state conventions in 1788. The, gov the federal government was reorganized into three branches in 1789 on the principle of creating salutary checks and 
balances. George Washington, who had led the Continental Army to victory, was the first president elected under the new Constitution, the Bill of Rights, forbidding federal restriction of personal freedoms and guaranteeing a range of legal pro protections, was adopted in 1791. Although the federal government outlawed American participation in the Atlantic slave trade in 1807. After 1820, the cultivation of the highly profitable cotton crop exploded in the Deep South and along with it, the slave population. The Second Great Awakening, especially in the period 1800 to 1840, converted millions to evangelical Protestantism. In the North, it energized multiple social reform movements, including abolitionism. In the South, Methodists and Baptists proselytized among slave populations. Beginning in the late 18th century, American settlers began to expand westward, prompting a long series of American Indian wars. The 1803 Louisiana Purchase was almost doubled the nation's area. Spain ceded Florida and other Gulf Coast territories in 1819. The Republic of Texas was annexed in 1845 during a period of expansionism, and the 1846 Oregon Treaty with Britain led to U.S. control of the present-day American Northwest. Victory in the Mexican-American War resulted in the 1848 Mexican Cession of California and much of the present-day American Southwest, making the U.S. span the continent. The California Gold Rush of 1848-49 spurred Im immigration to the Pacific Coast, which led to the California Genocide and the creation of additional Western states. The giving away of vast quantities of land to white European settlers as part of the Homestead Act, nearly 10% of the total area of the United States, and to private railroad companies and colleges as part of land grants, spurred economic development. After the Civil War, new transcontinental railways made relocation easier for settlers, expanded internal trade, and increased conflicts with Native Americans. In 1869, a new peace policy nominally promised to protect the Native Americans from abuses, avoiding further war, and securing their eventual U.S. citizenship. Nonetheless, large-scale conflicts continued throughout the West in the 1900s. Irreconcilable sectional conflict regarding the enslavement of Africans and African Americans ultimately led to the American Civil War. With the 1860 election of Republican Abraham Lincoln, conventions in three, 13 slave states declared session, secession and formed the Confederate States of America, the South, or the Confederacy, while the federal government the Union maintained that secession was illegal. In order to bring out the secession, military action was initiated by the secessionists, and the Union responded in kind. The ensuing war would become the deadliest military conflict in American history, resulting in the deaths of approximately 618,000 soldiers, as well as many civilians. The Union initially simply fought to keep the country united. Nevertheless, as casualties mounted after 1863 and Lincoln delivered his Emancipation Proclamation, the main purpose of the war from the Union's viewpoint became the abolition of slavery. Indeed, when the Union ultimately won the war in eight April 1865, each of the states in the defeated South was required to ratify the 13th Amendment, which prohibited slavery. Two other amendments were also ratified, ensuring citizenship for blacks and, at least in theory, voting rights for them as well. Reconstruction began in earnest following the war, while President Lincoln attempted to foster friendship and forgiveness between the Union and the former Confederacy. His assassination on April 14, 1865, drew a wedge between North and South again. Republicans in the federal government made it their goal to oversee the republic rebuilding of the South and to ensure the rights of African Americans. 
They persisted until the Compromise of 1877, where the Republicans agreed to cease protecting the rights of African Americans in the South in order for Democrats to concede the presidential election of 1876. Southern white Democrats, calling themselves Redeemers, took control of the South after the Reconstruction, beginning the nadir of American race elections. From 1890 to 1910, the Redeemers established so-called Jim Crow laws, disenfranchising most blacks and some poor whites throughout the region. Blacks faced racial segregation, especially in the South. They also occasionally experienced vigilant violence, including lynching. In the North, urbanization and an unprecedented influx of immigrants from Southern and Eastern Europe supplied a surplus of labor for the country's industrialization and transformed its culture. National infrastructure, including telegraph and transcontinental railroads, spurred economic growth and greater settlement and develop of the American Old West. The later invention of electric light and the phone would also affect communication and urban life. The United States fought Indian wars west of the Pacific River, of the Mississippi River, sorry, from 1810 to at least 1890. Most of these conflicts ended with the cession of Native American territory and their confinement to Indian reservations. Additionally, the Trail of Tears in the 1830s exemplified the Indian removal policy that forcibly resettled Indians. This further expanded a surge under mechanical cultivation, increasing surpluses for international markets. Mainland expansion also included the purchase of Alaska from Russia in 1867. In 1893, pro-American pro elements in Hawaii overthrew the Hawaiian monarchy and formed the Republic of Hawaii, which uh, the U.S. annexed in 1898. Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines were ceded by Spain in the same year, following the Spanish-American War. American Samoa was acquired by the United States in 1900 after the end of the Second Samoan Civil War. The U.S. Virgin Islands were purchased from Denmark in 1917. Rapid economic development during the late 19th and early 20th centuries fostered the rise of many prominent industrialists, tycoons like Cornelius, Cornelius Vanderbilt, John D. Rockefeller, and Andrew Carnegie led the nation's progress in the railroad, petroleum, steel industries. Baking became a major part of the economy, with J.P. Morgan playing a notable role. The American economy boomed, becoming the world's largest. These dramatic changes were accompanied by social unrest and the rise of populist, socialist, and anarchist movements. This period eventually ended with the advent of the Progressive Era, with significant reforms including women's suffrage, alcohol prohibition, and regulation of consumer goods. Greater antitrust measures changed ensure competition and attention to worker conditions were also put in place. The United States remained neutral from the outbreak of World War I in 1914 until 1917 when it joined the war as an associated power alongside the allies of World War I, helping to run the tide against the central powers. In 1919, President Woodrow Wilson took a leading diplomatic role at the Paris Peace Conference and advocated strongly for the U.S. to join the League of Late Nations. However, the Senate refused to approve this and did not ratify the Treaty of Versailles that established the League of Nations. In 1920, the women's rights movement passed a one passage of a constitutional amendment granting women suffrage. The 1920s and 1930s saw the rise of radios, for massive communication and the invention of early television. The prosperity of the Roaring Twenties ended with the Wall Street crash of 1929 and the onset of the Great Depression. After his election as president in 1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt responded with the New Deal. 
The Great Migration of Millions of African Americans Out of the American South began before World War I and extended through the 1960s, whereas the Dust Bowl of the mid-1930s impoverished many farming communities and spurred a new wave of Western migration. At first effectively neutral during World War II, the United States began supplying material to the Allies in March 1941 through the Land Lease Program. On December 7, 1941, the Empire of Japan launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, prompting the U United States to join the Allies against the Axis powers and the following year to intern about 120,000 U.S. residents, including American citizens of Japanese descent. Although Japan attacked the United States first, the United States nonetheless pursued a Europe-first defense policy. The United States thus left its West Asian colony, the Philippines, isolated and fighting a losing struggle against Japanese invasion and occupation. During the war, the United States was one of the four powers who met to plan the post-war world, along with Britain, the Soviet Union, and China. Along Although the nation lost around 400,000 military personnel, it emerged relatively undamaged from the war with even greater economic and military influence. The United States played a leading role in the Bretton Woods and the Alta Conferences, which signed agreements on new international financial institutions and Europe's post-war recognition. As an Allied victory was won in Europe. A 1945 international conference held in San Francisco produced the United Nations Charter, which became active after the war. The United States and Japan then fought each other in the largest Okay, guys. Naval Battle in history, the Battle of Lake Gulf, okay. The United States eventually developed the first nuclear weapons and used them on Japan in the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945 when the Japanese surrendered on September 2nd, ending World War II. After World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union competed for power, influence, and prestige during what became known as the Cold War, driven by an ideological divide between capitalism and communism. They dominate the, the military affairs of Europe, with the U.S. and its NATO allies on one side, and the Soviet Union and its Warsaw Pact allies on the other. The U.S. developed the policy of containment, towards the expansion of communist influence. While the U.S. and Soviet Union engaged in proxy wars and developed powerful, powerful nuclear arsenals, the two control countries avoided direct military conflict. The United States often opposed the Third World movements that it viewed as Soviet-sponsored and occasionally pursued direct action for regime change against left-wing governments, even occasionally supporting authoritarian right-wing regimes. American troops fought communist Chinese and North Korean forces in the Korean War of 1950-53. to The Soviet Union's 1957 launch of the first artificial satellite and 1961 launch of the first crude space flight initiated a space race, in which the United States became the first nation to land a, moon, a man on the moon in 1969. A proxy war in Southeast Asia eventually evolved, evolved into the Vietnam War with full American participation. At home, the U.S. had experienced sustained economic expansion and a rapid growth of its population and middle class following World War II. After a surge in female labor participation, especially in the 1970s, by 1985, the majority of women aged 16 and over were employed. Construction of an interstate highway system transformed the nation's infrastructure over the following decades. Millions moved from farms and inner cities to large suburban housing developments. In 1959, Hawaii became the 50th and last U.S. state added to the country. And the growing civil rights movement had used nonviolence to confront segregation and discrimination, with Martin Luther King Jr. becoming a prominent leader and figurehead. 
a combination of court decisions and legislation culminating in the Civil Rights Act of 1968 sought to end racial discrimination. Meanwhile, a counterculture movement grew, which was fueled by opposition to the Vietnam War, the Black Power Movement, and the Sexual Revolution. The launch of a war on poverty expanded entitlements and welfare spending, including the creation of Medicare and Medicaid, two programs that provide health coverage to the elderly and poor, respectively, and the means-tested food stamp program and aid to families with dependent children. The 1970s and early 1980s saw the onset of stagflation. After his election in 1980, President Ronald Reagan responded to economic stagnation with free market-oriented reforms. Following the collapse of Detente, the abandoned containment had initiated the more aggressive rollback strategy towards the Soviet Union. The late 1980s brought a thaw in relations with the Soviet Union, and its collapse in 1991 finally ended the Cold War. This brought about unpopularity with the U.S. unchallenged as the world's dominant superpower. After the Cold War, the conflict in the Middle East triggered a crisis in 1990 when Iraq invaded and attempted to annex Kuwait, an ally of the United States. Fearing the spread of instability, in August, President George H. W. Bush launched and led the Gulf War against Iraq, waged until January 1991 by coalition forces from 34 nations. It ended in the expulsion of Iraqi forces from Kuwait and restoration of the monarchy. Originating with thin U.S. military defense networks, the internet spread to international academic platforms and then to the public in the 1990s, greatly affecting the global economy, society, and culture. Due to the dot-com boom, stable monetary policy, and reduced social welfare spending, the 1990s saw the longest economic expansion in modern U.S. history. Beginning in 1994, the U.S. signed the North American Free Trade Agreement, causing trade among the U.S., Canada, and Mexico to soar. On September 11, 2001, Al-Qaeda terrorist hijackers flew passenger planes into the World Trade Center in New York City and the Pentagon near Washington, D.C., killing nearly 3,000 people. In response, President George W. Bush launched the War on Terror, which included a war in Afghanistan and the 2003-11 Iraq War. A 2011 military operation in Pakistan led to the death of the leader of Al-Qaeda. Government policy designed to promote affordable housing, widespread failures in corporate and regulatory governance, and historically low interest rates but set by the Federal Reserve led to the mid-2000s housing bubble, which culminated with the 2008 financial crisis. The nation's largest economic contraction since the Great Depression. During the crisis, assets owned by Americans lost about a quarter of their value. Barack Obama, the first African-American and multiracial president, was elected in 2008 amid the crisis and subsequently passed stimulus measures in the Dodd-Frank Act in an attempt to mitigate its negative effects and ensure there would be not a repeat of the crisis. In 2010, President Obama led efforts to pass the Affordable Care Act, the most sweeping reform to the nation's health care system in nearly five decades. In the presidential election of 2016, Republican Donald Trump was elected as the 45th president of the United States. On January 20, 2020, the first case of COVID-19 in the United States was confirmed. As of January 21st, 2021, the United States has almost 25 million COVID-19 cases and over 340,000 deaths. The United States is by far the country with the most cases of COVID-19 since April 11th, 2020. In the presidential election of 2020, Democrat Joe Biden was elected as the 46th president of the United States. On January 6, 2021, supporters of outgoing President Donald Trump stormed the United States Capitol in an unsuccessful effort to disrupt the presidential electoral vote count. 
The 48 contiguous states and the District of Columbia occupy a combined area of 3,119,885 square miles. Of this area, 2,959,064 square miles is contiguous land, composing 83.65% of total U.S. land area. Hawaii, occupying an archipelago in the Central Pacific, southwest of North America, is 10,931 square miles in area. The populated territories of Puerto Rico, American Samoa, Guam, Northern Mariana Islands, and U.S. Virgin Islands together cover 9,118 square, 85 square miles. Measured by only land area, the United States is third in size behind Russia and China, just ahead of Canada. The United States is the world's third or fourth largest nation by total area, ranking behind Russia and Canada and nearly equal to China. The ranking varies depending on how two territories disputed by China and India are counted and how the total size of the United States is measured. The coastal plain of the Atlantic seaboard gives way further inland to deciduous forests and the rolling hills of the Piedmont. The Appalachian Mountains divide the eastern seaboard from the Great Lakes and the grasslands of the Midwest. The Mississippi-Missouri River, the world's largest the fourth longest river system runs mainly north-south through the heart of the con- country. The flat, fertile prairie of the Great Plains stretches to the west, interrupted by a highland region in the southeast. The Rocky Mountains, west of the Great Plains, extend north to south across the country, peaking around 14,000 feet in Colorado. Farther west are the rocky grape basin and deserts such as the Chihuahua and Mojave. The Sierra Nevada and Cascade Mountain ranges run close to the Pacific coast, both reaching altitudes higher than 14,000 feet. The lowest and highest cones in the contiguous United States are in the state of California and only about 84 miles apart and an elevation of 20,310 feet. Alaska's Denali is the highest peak in the country and in North America. Active volcanoes are common throughout Alaska's Alexander and Aleutian Islands, and Hawaii consists of volcanic islands. The supervolcano underlying Yellowstone National Park in the Rockies is the continent's largest volcano volcanic feature. The United States, with its large size and geographic rarity, includes most climate types. To the east of the 100th meridian, the climate ranges from humid continental in the north to humid subtropical in the south. The Great Plains west of the 100th meridian are semi-arid. Much of the western mountains have an alpine climate. The climate is arid in the Great Basin, desert in the southwest, Mediterranean and coastal California, and oceanic in coastal Oregon and Washington and southern Alaska. Most of Alaska is subarctic or polar. Ha- Hawaii and the southern tip of Florida are tropical, as well as its territories in the Caribbean and the Pacific. States bordering the Gulf of Mexico are prone to hurricanes. And most of the world's tornadoes occur in the country, mainly in tornado alley areas in the Midwest and South. Overall, the United States receives more high impact extreme weather incidents than any other country in the world. The U.S. is one of 17 mega diverse countries. About 17,000 species of vascular plants occur in the Contiguous United States and Alaska, more than 1,800 species of flowering plants are found in Hawaii, few of which occur on the mainland. The United States is home to 428 mammal species, 784 bird species, 311 reptile species, and 295 amphibian species, as well as about 91,000 insect species. There are 62 national parks and hundreds of other federally managed parks, forests, and wilderness areas. Altogether, the government owns about 28% of the country's land area, mostly in the western states. Most of this land is protected, though some is leased for oil and gas drilling, mining, logging, or cattle ranching, and about 0.86% is used for military purposes.
Environmental issues include debates on oil and nuclear energy, dealing with air and water pollution, the economic costs of protecting wildfire, logging and deforestation, and international responses to global warming. The most prominent environmental agency is the Environmental Protection Agency, created by presidential order in 1970. The idea of wilderness has shaped the management of the public land since 1964 with the Wilderness Act. The Endangered Species Act of 1973 is intended to protect threatened and endangered species and their habitats, which are monitored by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. The United States is ranked 24th among nations in the Environmental Performance Index. The country joined the Paris Agreement in 2016 and has many other environmental commitments. It left the Paris Agreement in 2020. Okay, guys, that is my report on the United States of America. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.